we need to get information out as quickly as possible because yeah. we want everybody to thrive yeah. with autism. Yes. <laughs> Welcome back to another deep dive session with Dr. Tony Atwood. This time we're going to talk about the aspects that want to work and can't find work, and then talk about employers and how we can help educate employers as to the value of people on the autism spectrum as employees. Many people with high functioning autism want to work, we all know that, but they're having difficulty finding jobs. Now, I know you at your clinic have come up with something called Thriving Now. Can you tell us a bit about what that's intended to do? The clinic Minds and Hearts in Brisbane, founded by my friend and colleague Michelle Garnett, has a team of psychologists and we go through all age ranges and some we have followed through from when they were preschoolers to their 20s and 30s and so on. And we've recognized the importance of a good job. When I ask a person with ASD, who are you? Often they reply by what they do and what they know. Neurotypicals reply, by their social network and descriptions of personality. So for the sense of self, having something enjoyable and productive gives you that positive sense of self that's required. It gives you structure to your day. It's an antidote to depression. And it's also an opportunity to meet people and socialize. But the question is, not only do you find a job, but can you keep it? Now, there are various strategies to, to get jobs, but what we felt is that what's missing is how to give advice in keeping it, to maintain it. So, with our colleague Jay Hobbs, Michelle and I decided we'll design a program, five sessions of Thriving Now, and you can download it on thrivingnow.net. So we'll talk about all the things that are going to be required, like sensory sensitivity and how that can be accommodated in the workforce, how to cope with nonverbal communication, the social chit chat that's required, to teamwork, to the uh, office breaks and things like that, coping with change, moving into different roles from why you joined that workforce in the first place. So there is a workbook that you go through, there is information, you fill it in, and eventually you create your own little book, How to Explain Your Autism to the Workforce. But we also decided the employers and line managers need to know. So we did a section for them mm -hmm. on explaining the advantages and disadvantages of someone on the spectrum being in your workforce. What we're finding interesting is that some big companies, the information technology, but also the uh, banking industry and so on, are now actually selectively recruiting people with ASD mm -hmm. because of their qualities, mm -hmm. of their attributes in problem solving, in being able to attend to details with programming and a whole range of things. So they said, right, how can we select and support those with ASD? Because they're actually, for quality control, for originality in design, etc., they're the sort of people we want. So there's a, a change. It's coming from the top, working its way down. The general population tend to think of, oh yes, ASD, computers, information technology. Yes, there are those for whom that is what they want to do. They want to be computer graphics or an accountant or something like that, which, which is great. But there are a whole range of those with ASD in the creative industries mm -hmm. who express the sense of self, their thoughts and feelings through art and music. They sing in perfect pitch. They create music. They're in rock groups. They are sound engineers. They have an ability to write scripts to become a successful author of fiction. For many with ASD, as a coping mechanism, they escaped into imagination. Well, this now becomes something that you can do or to express your feelings in your latest song. But another one that we also work on is in the caring professions. Now that ranges from uh, teachers in special ed in particular, but also in terms of psychology and psychiatry, in terms of being a nurse, in being a therapist, 
and the person has a heart and a very good heart and is renowned for their kindness. Mm -hmm. And so I would say the caring professions needs to be considered as a career option. But, for example, for the teachers, they are fantastic with the kids. Absolutely. Their problem is the staff room and all the politics and all those sorts of things that are going on. So in our program, it's going through how do you cope with the ego of the boss? And if you are going to correct him because he's made a mistake, how to go about and also explain to the boss when the person with ASD corrects you, it's not to show you up. It's not to appear superior. It's to correct an error. So it's understanding the cultural differences. So that's what we're exploring in Thriving Now, is it's not designed to get everybody in computers. It's actually any career that you choose. And there is no career that's impossible for a person with ASD. When they apply themselves to it, they will become superb at it. Is it a free program or is there a charge for it? There is a charge for it. It's the costs of the recordings, yeah. the equipment, the information and so on. Um, it's not a phenomenal cost. Where can people find more information on the program? Just on the internet, thrivingnow.net.